Hello, this is DIY Reptiles, and today I'm going to be trying to remove some stuck shed off of a crested gecko. I noticed some stuck shed on the tip of the tail of one of my juvenile crested geckos, and this is me attempting to remove that. So I just noticed something that's really bugging me. So here's Christopher, who looks really small on camera, but he's actually a decent size now. And his tail there's stuck shed on the end, which means that he could essentially castrate his his tail. Okay, let me correct myself real quick. I did not mean castrate. What I meant is the process of castration, which is to remove the testicles from an animal, involves banding. So it's kind of like he's in a cutoff circulation, which is the same thing they do when you castrate goats, per se. It's the same thing they do when they remove the tail of sheep. They band it and cut off the circulation and then it falls off. That's what I'm wary of, not actual castration because this is just the tail. Because look how small it is. So it must, it's, it's probably been there for a while, which means essentially he could end up with a tail just like his mother who has, you know, a nip tail. So I'm wondering if that could have happened to her at this point. It's very possible. But there's like, it's impossible to get this thing off. I'm using these really precise tweezers, but it's so scary because if I grab on to his tail, like he could very well just drop it. And it's so different with crust geckos. Like if the iguana or like something like that, like a bearded dragon or something had an issue like this, you just grab it and you hold it and then you just like take it off and then it's over and it was horrible, but it's over at least. With this guy, I cannot restrict him. You can't restrict crested geckos like at all. And if you squeeze them, they're so they're you know they're so small and they freak out. So like there's no way I can get him to stop. Like I have to deal with him constantly walking. And there's just no way. Like I tried to like get him into. Like, if I try to get him into my hand, I don't know. Like it's really hard. So there's like a bit of like I'm trying to look for skin that I can kind of grab onto. And there's like a bit on the bottom, but like it's pretty hard to get to like the bottom like to look at the bottom of his tail so then I have to deal with this just constant crawling so I guess I'll leave it for tonight because I've probably already stressed him out enough but I'll have to try again later I mean you know when I when I go to feed him again but I'm really annoyed because if that like it could possibly like castrate his tail essentially and just you know it might that end might die off and just fall off which would be <laughs> really annoying so and unfortunate for him obviously but it's just I don't know what else to do I can't I'll just keep I can keep trying with the tweezers but it, like I said with an iguana or a bear dragon or something you just grab onto the skin and pull and just hope that it doesn't drop its tail in this case they're just too way too fragile the crushed geckos like it's so hard to restrain them in any type of way it's just they're too small and fragile it's just impossible so i think i made some progress it's still the same on from the back but on the bottom i seem to have gotten it part of it at least on the bottom which should help the top so maybe being in the high humidity environment in here for a while and then i can try to get the rest off later but I don't want to stress him out too much, and I don't want him for to accidentally force him to drop his tail because that would be very, very unfortunate. So, yeah, I just don't want that to happen. So hopefully part of it will come off on its own, and then I can help the rest. But I've kind of run out of good places to grab now, and again, I think he's getting more fidgety. And it is the most difficult thing to work on the bottom of a crested gecko's tail. But I'm glad that these guys are used to being handled, or at least he is. The phoenix kind of nuts sometimes, but I'm glad that he's used enough to being handled, but still, he's a pain. Uh, and any crest gecko would be, especially at this size. They're always walking. They'd never sit still, so you have to have some serious patience for that. But now I can, hopefully, that helped a little bit, and hopefully he'll that'll kind of fix itself a little bit before I have to help again. So it's unfortunate, but I'm really hoping that I can get all that off and then I, you know, no problems will result from that. If it's not any better by like Saturday, 
today's Wednesday, Saturday I'll feed him again. I'll put him in a tub and make it like crazy humid in there. And then his tail should, like the skin should release a bit and then I can hopefully peel it off a little bit easier. But it's normally super humid in here, so that should help as well. So I wanted to show this. His thing's off, I think. From what I can tell, there's there's not stuck shed there. So you can kind of see that it's expanded a bit and it doesn't look like it's like clenching down the tail. So it's still dark there, but um, but it's like a like like a lighter color on the bottom, like it's changed. So, for a minute, come here. So, as of today, I think his shed is gone, or I noticed today. So I think what happened was he finally shed again, and then he like pulled off his tail, and that did it for him. So that's really great. And he just ate really well. So between the first set of videos and that last clip was actually like two weeks. So it took some time for the shed to finally come off, but he eventually got it off. This is not a problem that I've had ever before or again since then, because this was filmed in February. It's now January of the next year. So it's been a while and I don't have Christopher anymore. Christopher turned out to be a female and I rehomed her, but I still do have Jasper, which was Finnick. Uh, Jasper also turned out to be female and I still have her and she's still crazy, which is not good. She never really warmed up to me, but this isn't really a problem I've ever had with crusted geckos, but what you can do is if your gecko has stuck shed, then what you want to do is you kind of want to soak it or make sure it is very humid. So I have had stuck shed problems with my leopard gecko. It's been a while because I keep it bioactive. When I know that it's, it's shedding, then I'll spray down her hide and then it'll be humid in there. But what you can do is you can use a plastic shoe box like this and you can either put a little bit of water in it or you put down some paper towels and get that moist and then you kind of lock them in there for a little while. It's easier with leopard geckos because generally the stuck sheds on their feet and they have to stay on the ground because they can't climb the walls. But with crusty geckos, they don't like water. They don't like being like that, but you could put them in there, leave them there for a little while, and then that should help loosen up the stuck shed and then you can aid in pulling it off. If your crusty gecko is having stuck shed problems, Likely it's because you're keeping it incorrectly or more accurately, you're just keeping it too dry. They shouldn't have any problems. Mine haven't. I don't really notice when they shed, but they do. And I have never had any other problems other than this. This was a fluke, I'm sure, just because everything else has gone completely fine for my crest geckos. I keep a lot of crested geckos and a lot of bioactive enclosures and I've never had this problem besides this one time. So it's kind of rare to see that in crested geckos unless you are keeping them incorrectly. I believe it is more common with leopard geckos and specifically their toes. Generally their toes have some problems shedding and getting the shed off of it and sometimes that can cause the toes to fall off if too much stuck shed builds up. Beth, my leopard gecko, actually has some lost toes on her feet because before I got her and even I think close after I got her, some of them ended up falling off because they were so tight. It's so many layers of skin on them that they lost circulation and they turned black and they fell off. So she can't climb completely correctly. So that's unfortunate, you don't want that to happen. So when you notice something like that, you wanna get the, the skin loose and then you use tweezers and pick it off. And leopard geckos generally don't like it, but if yours is pretty nice, then it'll kind of let you do that. Elizabeth is really difficult because I don't handle her very often. I don't know how much she was handled before she was like surrendered to me but I kind of just leave her alone and let her do her thing in her bioactive tank. So when I did have to work with her, it, it was kind of difficult. You just got to be careful and patient. And it's going to take some time. By um, just getting her out to film 
some footage of her messed up toes, I noticed that there was a tiny bit of stuck shed on the end of that toe right there. And I got it out with some tweezers. Now I'll put her back. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns, put in the comments below. And if you want more content, then subscribe.